What's up you guys, this is Tim Trevathan with Tim Trevathan Homes powered by VPR and in this video we're going to go over the cost of living as a single person. Now look, it's a very important thing to cover because there's a lot of people moving to Atlanta that they don't know anything about it, they don't know if they're going to like it or not, but at the very least it's important to know the cost associated to living here so that they know if it's even right for them to even move here to begin with. So we're gonna to have to use a test subject for going over these expenses. Who's the test subject? Me, that's right. I'm gonna go over those details from the standpoint of my own personal expenses when I was single for several years when I first moved to Atlanta. Once you see what I paid, you can kind of get an idea how much you're gonna to have to pay. And of course, my expenses may be different from yours. You might be more frugal than me. You might be a little bit more liberal in your spending. It all depends. So hopefully this video will be helpful. Well, let's go ahead and dive right into it. So let's go ahead and cover the biggest ticket item, and that is the mortgage. Now my mortgage on a monthly basis is $1,209. There's a couple things I need to explain about this. Now I bought my house back in 2018, and it cost 200,000 at the time. Now, obviously the home values have risen quite a bit now in this market, and you're looking at a median home value of around 375,000 in Atlanta. So keep that in mind as I'm explaining this to you. Later in the video, I'm gonna go over the adjusted rate based on inflation and home value appreciation. Just know that my mortgage was $1,209 based on a sales price of 200,000, and at the time, 4.875% interest rate refinanced to a 30 year fixed mortgage of 3.5%. So this is again, 3.5% interest rate. Now for a car, I have a Toyota Camry and the car payment for that every month is $405. I try to be frugal when it comes to the car and get one that's got good gas mileage and one that I know that I'm gonna be driving a lot and it's gonna still be reliable for many years to come. For utilities for my house, my utilities ran about $200 in the house. Now, if I was to break it down, I would say the electricity would be higher in the summer months, obviously, because I'm using the AC. While the winter months, when it gets colder, I'm using gas more, so the gas fee goes up. But on average, the total amount would be about $200 per month. That also includes water bill, which my water bill ran about $50. So the under for internet and TV, I was paying about $70 a month. So for internet, I had AT&T, and I know there's different services here. There's Comcast, Charter, Google Fiber. I had, but the internet alone cost $40. But in order for me to get a discounted rate on internet, I had to bundle that with the uBasic service. Since then, I've changed and I've used different streaming services, which I cover in another video. My cell phone bill is $79. I have Verizon Unlimited Service, so it's unlimited data, so for $79, I don't ever have to worry about my data running out. There's one time where I was actually showing a house out in the country, and I had T-Mobile at the time, and I could not access the lockbox on the door, and it was very embarrassing. It took about 10 minutes to finally get the key out. And after that experience, I realized, you know what? I'm gonna have to have better cell phone service. <laughs> so I ended up going with Verizon, and I've been very happy since. Now for gas, on a monthly basis, I was paying $130 a month. Again, this is on a Toyota Camry, so the gas mileage comes out to about 33 or 34 miles per gallon. So I, for food, I was paying about $500 a month. And this included eating out as well as cooking from home, a combination of both, but I would say about 75% of the time I was eating out. So as a single person, a lot of times I didn't have time to cook or I just didn't want to try to cook while I knew I was on the go. I needed to eat something, I would just go pick something up. With health insurance, I was paying 168 a month. Now I do need to break this down a little bit. Doing the Affordable Health Care Act, I was paying about $50 a month at the beginning because as a self-employed person, that was the best kind of health care that I could use at the time. Since then, my income's gone up. I went from a premium of $50 to being quoted to $280 a month. So then I quickly changed over to a different one called MediShare, which is a Christian healthcare sharing program, which 
kind of runs like health insurance, but it's not exactly a traditional health insurance plan. I was able to get premiums down to the 168 that I'm paying now. However, my deductible is kind of high if you compare it to other plans of about 5,000. Now for dental insurance, I never got it because I didn't think I needed it. I just did my general cleaning every six months and then just paid the fee that was associated to that. And then I haven't really had any problems with cavities since I was young, so that's why I didn't really need dental insurance. Now my car insurance was 140 a month, but technically it was $227 a month. And the reason being is because I had one citation for, I guess, not com coming to a complete stop at a stop sign. Now this is full coverage and car insurance, I would say, is a little bit higher than other states. And that's because we are a very car dependent city and there's a lot of accidents going on in Atlanta. I have another category titled other emergency. If for whatever reason, you know, I need to buy some medicine or go to urgent care, you're looking at about $50 a month for that. But what's one way I can help myself to be less injured or less unhealthy and prevent myself from going to the doctor? You got it, exercise. So a gym membership costs me $29 a month. And I've been going to LA Fitness, which I find to be a very good gym because it has not just you know, weights and treadmills, but you're also looking at basketball courts, swimming pool, racquetball courts. They've got different classes, cycling classes, dance classes that you could take. So a lot of good options for a very affordable price. I have another category that's kind of a miscellaneous like emergency fee, and that's called entertainment. My entertainment, I put $100 down because who knows whether I end up spending money to go see a movie with a friend, Six Flags, or just take a trip out and go to the beach with friends. Okay, so those are my monthly expenses here in Atlanta. And if you total everything together, it comes out to $3,167 a month. These are my monthly expenses as a single person in Atlanta. Now again, that's factoring in that $227 with the traffic citation for car insurance. It would be less if I didn't have that. So the actual amount is $3,080 a month. All right, so as I mentioned before, when I bought my house in 2018, the prices of homes were a lot less than they are now. So I think it would do us justice to talk about what is a current mortgage going for in today's market so that we can have a better understanding of the cost of living as a single person from a month to month basis. So as a recap, I bought my house in 2018 for $200,000 at a 3.5% 3 interest rate. So I was paying $1,209 per month for my mortgage. Now, if we look at today's market, probably want to use a different value for a home. Let's say $350,000. That is a more accurate number because the median home value in Atlanta is $375,000. So with this and a similar interest rate of 3.5%, we're looking at $2,014 a month for our mortgage. Okay, so that's the one big difference that we need to account for. The other two are related to inflation and that is gas prices and food prices. So if you account for gas and food and mortgage going up, then a more accurate today's cost of living as a single person in Atlanta would be $4,085. So I hope this gives you a good idea of the cost of living as a single person. So if you have any questions, please be sure to comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. One thing I do wanna mention is that I do have other videos that talk about the cost of living in general in Atlanta, as well as the cost of living as a married person. So if you fall into that category, please definitely check out those other videos. And I cover all sorts of things in the Metro Atlanta area. Hope to see you on the next video.